Good morning, folks, and welcome to another work week, except I don't actually have to go back until tomorrow. So let's talk about why we're speaking to each other this morning. So once again, on January 6th, 2025, we will once again move to certify the results of the November 2024 election. And we have done this in relative obscurity for 248 of our years of existence as a nation. But in 2025, we have now raised the day that we certify the election results to a special national security event. And this was done at the request of Mayor Muriel Bowser of Washington, D.C., because we want to avoid a repeat performance of January 6, 2021. And why are we doing this? We're doing this because an insurrectionist remains at the top of the ticket for the Republican Party and on the ballot, in spite of the fact that he instigated an insurrection the last time around. And he is still on the ballot because there are no laws in place in the United States that prevent him from being on the ballot. And because the corrupt and compromised Supreme Court of the United States refused to allow certain states to remove him from the ballot. And then on top of all of this, they granted him immunity from prosecution as long as what he was doing fell under the official designation of his acts as president of the United States, which none of what went on January 6th did that, but it was enough to stop his prosecution. So we are essentially here in this place in history because Donald Trump is once again refusing to say he will accept the results of the election in 2024, unless he is the victor. Unless he is the victor. You know, he's already stoking up his people. He's been talking nonstop since, since 2020. He has never stopped denying the results of the 2020 election, in spite of the fact that over 60 courts threw his cases out. And we'll do so again because he will do that all over again. Okay? He will do that all over again. You, you, can, you can bet on it. Okay? It'll be a long protracted battle in the legal system. And he will lose. But it will be painful. And he has every intention of doing that. Just this month, he threatened to jail people who indulge in nefarious behavior during the election, meaning people who don't see him as the victor, who don't proclaim their loyalty to him as a dictator, which is what he is looking for. And this is where we've gotten to in American history. And, and I find this all very disturbing that we have to go to these lengths just to certify the votes of a free and fair election. It is beyond the pale that this is where we are, but you know, this is necessary. And it's, it's disturbing to me that this is necessary. It's disturbing to me that one third of what remains in our Congress are still 2020 election deniers and would not have voted to certify the election. And by the way, by the way, J.D. Vance is saying that he'd been in office, he would have definitely not certified the election. Donald Trump's running mate. It's disturbing. So the notion that we get rid of Donald Trump and we get rid of the problem is totally false when you consider the fact that literally one third of our Congress is still election deniers. They must be removed from office as well. But there is no legal system that's going to remove them and prosecute them. 
They will be easier to prosecute if the American people can just remove them. And you know who they are. Ted Cruz. Who's on the bubble? Rick Scott. Jim Jordan. Ron Johnson. Andy Biggs. There's a whole host of people that need to go. You know your, you know, you know your assignment. There is no safety for American democracy while they are retaining power. And all in the meantime, we have the usual Russian propaganda stuff going on in the background. And we're going to talk about this in a separate video, okay? Because this is all part and parcel of what the American election has turned into and, and how much of it goes beyond what we can control as voters. Because there is Russian disinformation going on. The DOJ has already brought charges against people, including Donald Trump's 2016 campaign manager. And yes, indeed, with the help of Russian, the help of, of, of U.S. Internet influencers have helped spread Russian propaganda. Now, they're calling a lot of these people useful idiots, and I believe some of them are. I can give you names of people who are, but I know some of them are not useful idiots. And we're going to talk about that in a separate video. But my point is, this is what we've devolved into in the United States. After 248 years of allowing the peaceful transfer of power, we now get to call out all of the masses here to make sure that we can keep our, our elected officials safe from the mob that will probably convene in Washington. He's already stoking those fires. And the fact that we have to do this is profoundly disturbing to me. And I can't believe that it's not disturbing to the rest of the people, of the United States of America. And certainly we must not allow Donald Trump to win, no matter what the consequences are of that. The one thing we are certain of, should this happen again, Donald Trump is not the president that will be sitting in office after this election. It will be Joe Biden. And Joe Biden will not allow what went on at the Capitol on January 6, 2021 to happen again in 2025. And we can take comfort from that. But our job here, our mission, our assignment as Americans is to rid our government of this garbage because that is what the GOP is. It's garbage. And they can all lament about how unfortunate they are that Donald Trump is at the helm and this is what he's done to the party, but this is what they have constructed. This could all have been avoided had they done the right thing and impeached Donald Trump for his actions on January 6, 2021. They had cause. He would not be eligible for the ballot under any circumstance at that point. This could all have been avoided. But the Republican Party chose knowingly to protect Donald Trump. Now those enablers, they all must go as well. I will talk to you all later.